Good day to you my fellow endoskeletons, I'm Kenator and welcome back for another Starbase Progress Report. We're on week 34 of 2020 and if you're new here I bring you the latest news and updates of everything Starbase every Monday, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss out. Now let's get to it. For the Lowry quote of the week, I've picked out something that will address many questions of shields that I get. Basically, there is very little chance of shields in Starbase. All shields really do is extend the time to kill and save you from repairing your ship if your shields hold. Now for the first part, that can be done by balancing the ship armors to have the same effect. The second part, although you think it might be good from a player perspective, bad in terms of not using other parts of the game like mining or refining, or adding to the economy by buying materials needed to repair. It also makes the amazing real damage we get from voxel destruction on our ships completely pointless. And this is a huge selling point of Starbase. The damage goes where the damage hits. Why would you take that away? Another reason I hear about this is it will let people be more creative without having to worry about armor. And I completely disagree with this as well. Finding creative solutions to problems drives innovation of the design. Take that away and most will just get lazy and chuck a shield gen on any ship. While more serious designers will still build meta ship designs that are well designed to take a hit and keep going without shields. And then adding shields on top of this will make these ships nearly unbeatable. So I hope that gives you something to think about on the topic. Feel free to disagree and discuss in the comments. Now onto the progress report. The main design features worked on last week were design for remote explosives has finished and is now being implemented. Design for the mining laser changes is underway. First version of the ore collector design has been finished and now being implemented. This ore collector is very much most likely going to be the ship based one we have all been waiting on. Design for transfer all feature for all connected containers in mining backpack has been worked on. This is great news for people with very very large haulers. It takes forever to click individual stacks into your inventory on the station. So this will be well received. Progression design for the demolition job has been finished. Cutting tool has been added to the demolition job. New shipwrecks have been added for demolition job, carrier and Vesama Vinet. Total mass text in the universal tool material tab has been changed to total volume. New asteroid belt tech has been tested and economy configurations and fixes have been made. Tool, weapon and ammo prices have been adjusted. In station design this week we have starting stations our layout has been changed. The work hub update is in progress with a hall created for the upcoming repair job and grid slot layout has been changed waiting for level art and an LOD update. Shop signs have been updated with the legacy name for market station has been changed to marketplace and the legacy name for the showroom has been replaced with the spaceship shop's logo and the Occam Industries spaceship shop has been updated with the Magnus and Moonfish being added and these ships will spawn in with the rotation they've been built but that will be fixed later and shop terminals have been moved to the front of ships for better visibility. And now onto the gameplay updates. Refuel base logic implementation is underway. Finally we can get some refueling very very soon. A bug fix that occasionally caused the player to drift away after sitting down on a chair. I've had this one myself and can be quite annoying as you end up miles away from your ship and still going and you can still control your ship. Very, very weird bug. Talk dead zone adaption adjusted further, especially poorly maneuvering ships should be able to fly straight better. Angular changes are now applied to moving ships. Pieces split from a larger moving one start with a matching velocity. Pricing support added for items that are made of materials other than their default material. And when despawning ships with cargo frames, the cargo will be put into station storage if possible. For UI updates, we have the ship detail info page is being worked on. Hauling request screen is in the works. And we have some UI bug fixes with social menu context menu duplicates when right clicking in the quick access area has been fixed. Quick bar assert when there is no quick bar data saved has been fixed. Modular armor slot double clicking and dragging not setting item into slot has been fixed. Ammo being removed when item is dragged to the equipment slot has been fixed. Modular armor slots color appearing wrong has been fixed. Dragging armor pieces to some modular slots has been fixed as well. And item type without inventory entry not loading into quick bar upon login has been fixed. The Starship Creator updates this week are the overlap test to detect overlapping objects that were bolted or welded together has been improved. The default multi-user undo system action history size has been set to 100. Settings menu options for configuring multi-user undo system history size have been added. And a bug that caused spaceship designer settings to only apply to the current spaceship designer editor has been fixed. This week's animation changes are first person animations polished for the long rifle, work on remote explosive animations resumed, 
and Rummage Animations polish has been worked on. And for the Station R updates, we have legacy station assets are being removed, which temporarily affects the visuality of the station structures. The Rando Player Spaceship Shop logo has been updated. Hologram LODs have been created for the Player Spaceship Shops. Occam Industry Spaceship Shop logo sign holograms added to help players more easily identify the entrances to the shop. Sunny Ship Center and Marketplace holograms have been changed and a new mesh for the new Rando logo has been created. In weapon art this week, we have Auto Cannon VFX has been updated and FX offset issue in the buzzsaw has been fixed. And finally, other updates this week, our triangle thruster extension booster design is in progress. New large asteroid cluster settings have been tested in game. Assets for the explosive drill have been added. I'm officially calling this one the boomstick. The battalion armor set textures have been added. Updated mining backpack texturing is in progress and various UI assets have been worked on with camera overlay for taking screenshots, quick bar on off toggle buttons and tooltip storage size requirement icons. No feature video this week, but don't forget if you do get into closed alpha, be sure to send any funny or awesome clips and recordings my way for a chance to be featured on the channel. Feel free to contact me via Discord or come jump on my Discord server, which is also home to my faction, the Keybots, should you be looking for one to join. As always, please smash that like button, share the video with your friends and faction, leave a comment with any questions you want answers to, and I'll see you in the next one. Kenator, out.